if you're a business owner, there's going to come a point where you need a stronger tech stack to have a clear picture of everything all in one place. From startup to enterprise, NetSuite is your one-stop solution. Visit netsuite.com slash SPI to download their KPI checklist for free and support this podcast too. If you do find yourself buried in manual work or struggling to have a clear picture of your business, you should know three numbers. 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have been upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. 25, NetSuite turns 25 years old this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. And the number one, because your business is one of a kind. So you can get a customized solution for all of your KPIs and one efficient system when, with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash SPI. That's netsuite.com slash SPI to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash SPI. There was once a time when building a website was a massive undertaking and a huge pain, something that you would need to clear your entire schedule for. Well, guess what? Those days are over, and now you can build a professional, sparkling website in just seconds, thanks to Hostinger. In fact, I recently did this, and I shared the process on my YouTube channel, and it was absolutely mind-blowing, especially considering it took like days on end previously when I first started building websites. This tool is amazing, and I was using AI to do it. So Hostinger is a top highly rated global web hosting and website creation brand, right? And all you have to do to build a website is answer three questions. Here it is. You enter your brand name, you select the website type, you describe your business, and then you can customize it further with a drag and drop editor. It's literally that simple. I just went through this process. I promise you, it is the easiest way to build a website. And it also offers some AI-driven SEO-friendly copy, an AI logo maker. Plus, they make all this super affordable. It's less than $3 a month, including a free domain name. So create a live website now at hostinger.com slash SPI. And listeners of this podcast can enter SPI for 10% off your order and a free domain name. H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash SPI and use the code SPI for 10% off and a free domain name. It's incredible. Now back to the show. This is the Smart Passive Income Podcast with Pat Flynn, session number 254. Three, two, one, lift off. Welcome to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, where it's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now your host, his hands are almost too small for the iPhone 7 Plus, Pat Flynn. Want to stop grinding through resumes and just meet your match already? Well, you can with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. It's your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, plus their matching engine helps you find quality candidates fast. And it works like really fast. In fact, by the time this ad's over, 23 new hires will have been made on Indeed, according to Indeed data worldwide. It's the perfect match of speed and quality. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. And I think Indeed is the place to go. It's easy to manage. Everything is in just one spot. The interview process, it's scalable with you and your business as it grows. Like there's no other platform you would need than Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored ad job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash smart passive. Just go to indeed.com slash smart passive right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash smart passive. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire, you need Indeed. If you're at a desk a lot like I am, it is really important to move around and increase circulation as much as possible. And a sit slash stand desk can be a massive game changer. If you haven't tried one before, this offer from Uplift is for you. Plus, you can support the show at the same time. Visit upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. Uplift Desk is the place to go. There are so many customization options, plus free 30-day returns, free shipping, free accessories with every desk. And did I mention the industry-leading 15-year warranty? It's no wonder they've been wire cutters pick for six years in a row. Plus, they offer a great range of ergonomic chairs and storage systems if you want to give your whole workspace a makeover. They even have an augmented reality feature so you can see what your new desk will look like in your space using your phone. I mean, they even make a height-adjustable conference table that doubles as a regulation-sized ping-pong table. These folks have really thought of it all. And if you want to build the workstation of your dreams, I highly recommend checking them out. Just go to upliftdesk.com SPI for 5% off your order. 
That's uplifttdesk.com slash SPI to get 5% off your entire order. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm incredibly excited because something awesome is happening next week, something that I've been waiting a long time for, and I know, I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for as well. And to set this up, I wanna let you know that today's episode is just you and me. No guests on the show today, but I will be going back into time sharing some experiences with previous launches and products that didn't go very well and why they didn't work out the way I thought they would and why I am doing something next week, uh, which is at the end of February here in 2017, that has been a long time coming, uh, something that I've been working on for quite a while and actually a lot of you have been asking for, and that is my first, and I do that in air quotes, first online course. It's called Smart From Scratch, and I'm really excited because we've already tested this with a beta group and have fine-tuned it, refined it, and now we're launching it publicly for everybody next week, which I'm really excited about. So if you all wanna check it out, you can hang out at smartfromscratch.com, and it sounds like exactly who it's for, and that is for people who are starting just from scratch. So Smart From Scratch was built uh, also because people who picked up Will It Fly have told me and have act, uh, asked me uh, f specifically for some more help in the process of validating one's business idea. So if, if you've read Will It Fly and you've gotten enough information from that, this course isn't for you. This is for people who are just starting out, who need a little bit more hand-holding than just reading a book, who need a little bit of accountability, who need a little bit of a community, behind the process and a little bit more access to myself. And so I wanted to talk not about the course the whole time and you know I think just me mentioning it one, once or twice here will be enough promotion for it. I'm not gonna knock you over the head with it. Uh, but I wanted to talk about why it was built the way it was built, something that I've previously launched that didn't go according to plan and something that I did that was kind of surprising to a lot of people, um, but I felt was the right thing to do after that first sort of, I don't wanna say failure, but uh, just sort of experience, I guess. And I wanted to talk about how this product, this new one, Smart From Scratch, uh, was launched and, and, and also tested. I used the strategies that I, that I teach in my book, Will It Fly, to actually launch this course, to validate it to get feedback from people and make it even better before it gets launched publicly. So again, I'm really excited about it and I'll tell you more about the course in just a minute. But first, let's go back into time as I often like to do and not just because I'm a huge Back to the Future fan, but because we can learn from history. That's why we take history in school so we can learn from the past. And I wanna bring you back to 2013 when my team and I had spent uh, several hundred hours creating a membership site that I launched uh, later that year and it was called Breakthrough Blogging. Some of you who may have been following me for a while may remember the launch of this and may remember that there was some controversy around it, and I'll, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But last year, uh, a few years after it was launched, I decided, uh, my team and I decided to decommission it, to basically turn the whole thing off. For a while, it was still available to people, but the initial round of students who were in there eventually dropped off, never used it anymore. Uh, and like I said, I learned a lot of lessons along the way. So the reason that I created Breakthrough Blogging was to specifically address the issues that a lot of bloggers were facing at the time. And there were multitudes of things that were stopping bloggers in their tracks from growing, from scaling, from continuing on their journey after getting started. And I wanted to create this membership site to become a resource for people and a community so we can all band together and stick with our guns and keep moving forward with our blogging journey. Because I know from my own experience that it takes quite a while to find success uh, as a blogger, but also it takes a lot more things like community and resources where you can get answers from and inspiration uh, and, and stories and ideas and strategies and tactics. And I wanted to include all of that in Breakthrough Blogging. So my team and I spent about four months creating content. Caleb, uh, Caleb Wajik came over to my house. We filmed uh, several videos, I wanna say over 40, that were included in this membership site. And my hope was that people would wanna stick around and continue to pay monthly to get access to this community. It was very much modeled after my first course that I ever took, which was Internet Business Mastery, which is available at internetbusinessmastery.com. And I loved it because I was more than happy to pay a monthly fee to get access to all the tutorials that were there, the new things that were coming every single month, the interviews and the new tactics. Everything was very up to date. And in addition to that, 
the forums and the community that was in there were extremely valuable. You might remember part of my history and my story is how, in, in terms of how I got started. It was those connections in those forums and the ability to communicate with those people and then at some point meet with them in person in San Diego that led to a lot of my success. So I attribute a lot of my success in the beginning to being a part of that course and that membership site and the forums that were in there. And I modeled breakthrough blogging to be just that. I was really excited about it because uh, it really did address a lot of the problems that people were having in the blogging space. Everything from technical issues to mindset issues to money issues, uh, the whole lot uh, with, like I said, 40 different lessons and videos that were in there. And I had planned to continue to add more every single month. We also did some cool things in there where people could ask questions and the community could sort of like or thumbs up the questions that were being asked so that I could know which uh, lessons should be created next. And that, that worked really well. The forums in there were really cool too. And when the uh, when Breakthrough Blogging launched, they were completely active. And I was just, uh, again, I thought I had created exactly what I wanted to. Now, the launch process was really interesting. I actually got a lot of negative feedback from people because I was giving a lot of content away for free, as I am now, and I, can, I continue to still do so. Um, but I feel like there was a little bit of a lack of confidence coming from me. And I don't know if, the, if, the, if it was anything I said uh, or maybe just my approach to things, but I remember getting a number of people saying, hey, Pat, is this actually a product you believe in or is this something that you're creating just to make money from us? Uh, and there were a number of comments in my launch post uh, and people saying, Pat, you sold out, you're just squeezing money from us. And it was really hard on me because I knew I was creating it from a place of serving and a place of giving. Uh, I had worked really hard on it and these were addressing really technical and uh, mindset issues that people were having in the blogging space. And so I was a little bit taken aback by that. And then when I think about it, and you know, when I thought about this very recently actually, it was just a very small percentage of people who actually were very outspoken about how they felt about it. I remember getting a ton of great feedback from people who were taking the course and people who said that they couldn't yet afford it but were looking forward to taking it. But you know, we always have this weird math as entrepreneurs, right? We, uh, we, we think that one negative comment is greater than you know, a thousand positive comments. And so looking back, that was one thing that flustered me a little bit. So not to say that that's going to happen again. It very well could, but you know what? It doesn't matter because I know that my new course, Smart From Scratch, has been proven and tested already and I'm loving it and I'm just so happy. And another thing that goes along with that is you do have to be confident in what you're selling and you have to really believe in it. And the idea of selling isn't bad. That's the other thing that I've recently learned over the past couple of years. Selling is okay. And when I think about Internet Business Mastery and you know a half dozen other courses that I uh, took in the past, man, I'm so thankful that I paid for those courses because they were extremely valuable. And I, I can't remember who said this. I think it may have been Derek Halpern or somebody else. Um, but somebody had once told me, Pat, you are actually doing your audience a disservice by not selling a course that could actually help them. And it took me a while to really grasp what that meant until like I said earlier, people who even, they've gotten the free information on the website, they purchased the book, Will It Fly, yet they are still asking for help. And it just shows you that providing free content is fantastic, but in order to get people, some people to take action, some people can take action from the free content, no, no problem, but some people need a course that's a little bit more structured. People will pay for convenience. And not only that, when there's skin in the game, and I've noticed this every time I've purchased courses in the past versus getting free access to them. Every time there is skin in the game and I've paid for something, I feel like I have to go in there and actually get my money's worth for it. And I know it's the same for other people too. So if you're at all debating whether or not you should create a course or not, uh, first of all, decide whether or not that's the best way to help your audience. And if you feel it is through having conversations, through validation and asking, well then go for it, make it happen but validate that process first and pre-sale the course if possible and have your initial round of students be there to help create the course and turn it into exactly what it should be. I did not do that with Breakthrough Blogging. So when I launched it and I actually started making sales, I got very lucky that it was something that people purchased. And I think uh, many of us know that I've been able to build a ton of trust with people over time. So a lot of people just bought because I finally had something that they could pay for. And that's actually what some people told me. Hey, Pat, I'm buying this. Uh, I may not need it, but I'm getting it because I know that I've gotten a lot of free information from you already. And I just wanna 
pay you back because you're finally giving me a way to do that. And I'm so honored by that. And it's it's not the first time I've experienced that too. Back when I launched my initial ebook in uh, the Green Exam Academy website uh, and the lead exam space, I ran a survey to my audience. I just asked uh, a question to them for the people who purchased. I said, hey, really quick, what made you purchase this? Why did you buy this? And 25% of the people who responded back had said, I bought this because you finally came out with something that I could pay for. I, and I didn't understand what that meant. So I actually got on the phone and, and had email conversations with some of these people who had answered in such a way, because there, there were a number of them, a handful of them. Uh, and I, I asked them, well, can you explain what you mean? And because for a year, I was providing free content and charts and study tips, and I actually helped these people pass this exam for free. These were the action takers. They took the free information that was on my website and they passed the tests on their own before I had a product to, to, to provide them. Um, they felt bad, they said. They said, we felt bad taking this free information from you and not giving you something back in return. You never gave us anything that we could do back for you. So many of them said, Pat, because you came out with an ebook, we bought it because uh, you finally gave us a way to pay you back. And it, that, that's, that's what really taught me the lesson that I teach all of you all the time. And that is your earnings are a byproduct of how well you serve your audience. And relationships come first. That trust that you build with your audience is the number one asset because things like that can happen. And I saw that with Breakthrough Blogging. When I came out with Breakthrough Blogging, uh, it, I, I believe it sold for 147 or 197. And the issue with the launch, going into sort of one of the first of a few problems that were in and around uh, and surrounding this course, was that I launched it in conjunction with a promotion that was going on with a site uh, called Only72. And Only72 was a site that was worked on by uh, Adam Baker and, and a few other people, and I got involved with it too where they would come up, come up with these deals. You may have seen these websites before where uh, they're not just selling one thing, but they're selling a whole bundle of things, these packages where uh, many people will put in their uh, their product and, and it'll be just one overall price to get access to all of them. Uh, and in this particular bundle, uh, which we called the Be Everywhere bundle, which included my blogging course, a uh, podcasting course from Cliff Ravenscraft, uh, somebody who had a social media course, I think maybe even Lewis Howes was involved and a few other people. I mean, it was a huge package with a value of probably nearly $1,000 uh, when, when, when you you break it down, uh, that was only being sold for, like I said, under $200. So it's a steal. But the f that was the first mistake, that I launched it with these other people. Not that it's bad to be associated with other people, but as, in terms of a membership site and a first course that I was coming out with, uh, to launch it along with these people, when you divided the number of courses into the total price, that basically showed that my course was worth you know 30 bucks if you wanted to divide it that way. And it really devalued uh, the course and, and the potential quality that was in it. And like I said, a number of hours were put in, but because of the price and because of how it was launched, it was perceived as not being as valuable. And I believe not as many people purchased it just because. Actually, I remember a number of comments from people saying, hey, Pat, I would buy this if you were selling it on your own, but I don't need any of this other stuff. I just wanna buy your course. Now, people who thought that that way also did buy the course, uh, and got sort of everything else along with it as a bonus. But I made some mistakes with my approach. Now, I thought the membership site model was beautiful. You know, that's sort of the holy grail of passive income where you can get people to pay a recurring monthly income to be a part of this community. And that's amazing because you have a better understanding of the income that's coming in month over month as opposed to, you know, selling eBooks. You know, you never know what it's gonna be like the next month. It's hard to project your earnings. But with a membership site where you know you have a certain members paying a certain dollar amount and knowing that you're going to add new members uh, on the next month, and also people are gonna drop off too, uh, you know, hopefully you can be able to project that your earnings are gonna grow and you'd be able to really be confident and feel secure in the money that's coming your way. And that's why membership sites and continuity programs, as they call them, are really 
great. And again, I was modeling off of Internet Business Mastery. There are a number of other continuity programs and membership sites that are fantastic that are out there. For example, fizzle.co. You might remember Corbett Barr uh, and Chase Reeves uh, and, and a number of other people who have worked with, uh, with those guys who have created this amazing video library of amazing online business strategies and tactics and interviews. And they've been doing really well. They have a very tight-knit community there. Uh, all those fizzlers. And then also, Upreneur. Chris Ducker has been on the show multiple times, and he has created a community at youpreneur.com that is basically what I wish bl Breakthrough Blogging would have done, and he's done a better job of actually keeping up with it and providing new content and coming out with these amazing blueprints that come out every month. They, they're fantastic. Uh, um, I'm featured in there in an interview as well. And his Youpreneur members are just absolutely ecstatic that, that they're a part of it. But for me... I wasn't able to create that momentum. When the product launched, uh, I had a ton of momentum. You know, I was really excited. A, a few hundred members were in there. I think about 300 members signed up. And the first couple of weeks were fantastic. You know, everybody was introducing themselves in the forums. Uh, people were getting access to the videos. We were, we were hooked up to Wistia, which was our video hosting platform. And we could see exactly how many people were watching. And the, the traffic and the numbers were through the roof. People logging in multiple times a day. And everything, everybody was excited. And, and the first month was fantastic. And even the second month, too, because we had planned ahead in terms of what content was coming. But month over month, I started to see uh, the forums being less and less used. I realized that uh, it was going to take a lot of work at that point. I had never hosted my own forum and, and I needed some help from my own team members just to keep up and keep asking questions and keep, pe keep people engaged. And then another part of it was month over month as we got into the year, I started to feel, I, I started to feel this transition from being excited about each next month uh, and all the content that was gonna go in it. Like I said, we planned ahead for a lot of that, but after about six months, um, I, I, th there was no plan. And I felt like I had to force new con content in there. And then we started doing these uh, webinar interviews that were just accessible to the people who were members. And those started off really well, but then those started to die out and they started to feel forced. And then I got to the point where I just didn't like how I was teaching. I didn't like the method of actually having to force myself to create new content. And then the kicker was, I, I, I can't remember who it was, but one of the members emailed me and said, hey, Pat, how do I know that I'm successful with this course? And I couldn't answer that. You know, I wanted to answer, oh, well, you'll have a general feeling of, uh, uh, you know, that you're on top of your blog. And, you know, that's not a good answer. Um, there was no f tangible yes or no point where somebody could say, yes, I'm s successful with this course or, or no, I'm not. So everybody would have a different view. And f for me not to be able to control that was very difficult. And that leads into why Smart From Scratch and all the future courses that I'm going to come out with are built the way they, they are. Um, and that is they're going to solve a very specific problem and have very specific promises. And it's going to be very clear whether or not it meets those promises or not, whether it's uh, meeting a certain number or having a certain dollar amount after a certain point or, you know, whatever. You go into it knowing what you're, you're going to get out of it. And that's great because leading up to it in the sales and the offers, it's very clear who it's for and who it's not for. It's also very clear as students whether you're successful or not and it's very clear for me as a producer of these courses whether it's something that is working or it's not now of course i would only produce these courses if i knew that the information in there could actually help people reach those numbers but again because it's a very tangible solution a solution to a very specific problem i'm able to have a much better feeling of confidence in what it can do and the fact that people will either view it as successful or not and not be confused about that idea so that's why courses like Smart From Scratch and the future courses that I'm going to come out with, uh, at least the ones that are solving these specific problems, they're going to be a one-time fee, one-time cost, and you'll have lifetime access to the course. That's the approach that I'm now taking with the content that I'm putting into these, uh, th these programs. So wrapping up on breakthrough blogging, uh, one more thing I want to sh share with you is last year, like I said, I, I decommissioned it, meaning I kind of turned it off. Uh, there were a lot of people who... Uh, emailed me when I said that it was closing and said, you know, we're actually uh, quite surprised because we got a lot of value out of this and we know that it wasn't what you thought it was going to be and you stopped uploading content, but we still feel it was worth the price of admission. Uh, and I was very thankful for that kind of feedback, but there were other people who were actually uh, very disappointed with the way that it had progressed 
and I can totally empathize with them. And I, uh, first of all, I apologized uh, to everybody. I sent an email out to all of the students and then I offered a full refund. And this was three years after the course was actually launched. Uh, I offered everybody a, f a full on refund for, for their, 100% of their price. And about 10% of the students actually took me up on the offer. I thought it was gonna be more um, and I would have been totally fine with that. And, and the reason I did that, this is sort of unheard of actually, a lot of people were very surprised I did this, but for me in my own conscience, uh, I just, I knew I had to sort of clean the slate a little bit and, and, and start over fresh. I again approached it in a way uh, where I knew I wanted to serve my audience and I just didn't do as good of a job as I thought I was going to do. Now, like I said, I learned a lot of lessons from this. So even though it was something that uh, was opened and then closed and I even offered a refund, um, I still felt like I got a lot out of that experience. And sometimes that, that's what you have to do. You have to put yourself out there, try something. And yes, using other people as inspiration and as an example uh, and as a template is good, but you have to also be conscious about how things are going. And if it's not going the way you thought it was going to go, you have to step back and ask why and what's happening and what can be done better the next time around. And so that's why when this brand new course was coming out smart from scratch, I really wanted to do it the right way. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do was validate the course more than anything. I wanted to see if there were actually students who were willing to take this course even before the course was created. And so that's what I did. I actually created the outline for it and talked a lot about what it was gonna, what was gonna happen. I uh, even created like a sales landing page for it using Teachable that was, uh, and that still is the, a program that we're using to house the, the the course platform. It's the course software that we're using. I actually love the course software so much that I actually uh, recently came on as an advisor for Teachable, which which I'm really excited to announce. I'm not even sure if I had uh, if I had announced that yet, but but I am really excited to be a part of the company more than just a customer and an affiliate now, but as somebody who 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 can potentially make an impact on the growth of the company and sharing it with other people in this world. My first experience with Teachable was actually through the companion course that goes along with Will It Fly. Now the companion course was one that was created simply to collect email addresses and also serve the readers in a way that was different than I thought other people were offering their readers from their books. So traditionally many books, they'll begin to collect email addresses by uh, sending people over to a landing page where they can, in exchange for an email address, get access to uh, you know, a video or an, an ebook or a special bonus of some kind. Uh, and this was a bonus for reading the book, but it wasn't just uh, one thing. It was an entire companion course. And by companion course, it was built in a way where when people go through the companion course, it, it's actually laid out in the same way as the book, it, chapter by chapter, same names of the chapters. The information in the course is the same as the chapters, but for example, if the book uh, outlines a particular example or walks you through a certain process, there will be videos of that process in the companion course. Uh, there's also the downloadable worksheets. There is, are all the links that are mentioned in the book are there as well. And it became a very high value thing to offer my audience and my readers for free. And actually it, it was converting like crazy. I think 33% uh, of the readers of the book and there are tens of thousands of them have converted uh, into that email list. So in my email service provider convert kit, I have tens of thousands of people uh, marked as those who have taken the Will It Fly companion course, meaning I know they've picked up the book because that's the only place I offer it. And I know way, where they are at in their business. And I also know through the feedback from these people and a lot of other people who have read the book and shared messages with me that they want even more than that. They wanted a little bit more hand-holding, sort of a time-based course to go through the process. They wanted a little bit more accountability in a community and other, other students that are going along with them. And that's where Smart From Scratch came from, the idea for it. The true validation came when I actually sold the course. I pre-sold it, and that is the will it fly process. When you come up with an idea, collect an email list or, or a group of uh, people who are interested in learning more about that topic and expertise that you have to offer, and then ask them to pay for that thing ahead of time. Much like a Kickstarter campaign, you pay for the idea before it's made, or an event, you pay for a ticket to the event before it happens. Well, you can do the same thing for your uh, products, whether it's a digital product like the courses that I'm talking about, or even a physical product, the idea of that product and perhaps getting access to an early prototype or wanting to be first to gain access to it uh, once it comes off the manufacturing line. So I did that and I simply emailed 
two groups of people who I had pre-segmented in my list. And by pre-segmented, I mean in ConvertKit, I have, through a series of questions and actions that I'm collecting information about from my subscribers, I'm understanding who they are. And there are certain moments in the email sequences when I can understand whether or not a person has even started their business yet or not. Uh, that's one. And then the other is I can determine whether or not a person has gone through Will It Fly and has gone ac gotten access to the uh, companion course. So just two segments alone out of the, the several that are in there in my system, I sent an email out saying that I'm coming out with this course and that I'm, I'm validating it. And if I, get a, if I get a certain number of people in there to say yes, then I will go ahead and create it and, and release it to you. If not, well, then I'm just going to refund your money, no problem. So I set up the landing page through uh, Teachable and set up the, the process where there were uh, no courses were, or excuse me, no lessons or modules were available. It was just simply getting access and pre-selling the course. So I, see, I sent an email out to those uh, segments and um, I just said, hey, this is what I'm coming out with and here's the landing page. If you're interested, sign up. It's $197, which is the same price that it's gonna be when it comes out. And I, the reason I did that uh, a lot of times people will discount the price of sort of the early bird or early access uh, to the course. And I decided to keep it the same price because I wanted to show that I knew that this was a high value course uh, worth this much, if not more, but I wasn't going to change it. It, it. I didn't want people to sign up because of the price. I wanted people to sign up because they were excited about it and because I knew they were action takers, people who were actually going to go through the process, not people who got on early just because it was at a discount price. So uh, I offered it at 197 and I decided to cap it at 100 people. I said, okay, if I can get to 100 people with these size of lists, uh, then I know it's, it's, it's definitely good to go. That's gonna be the max I will handle because I wanna keep in close contact with these people. Uh, I don't wanna open it totally and get you know, potentially thousands in there, perhaps, uh, and if, if, you know, in, in, a, in a good scenario, a, a ton of people would come in, but then I would have a hard time going through the validation process with these people in terms of getting feedback, collecting feedback from them as they're going through the course, being able to interact with them on a, on a closer level, getting to know them, uh, and making them feel like they are a part of something special. So that's why I capped it at 100. And within four hours, we had about 80 people sign up which I was very happy about, obviously. I mean, I, I would have been happy with 30. That, I would have, that was kind of my number I was shooting for to determine whether or not this is something I should continue with and, and then actually spend time to build. So we had about 80 sales in about four hours and then uh, a couple started to sprinkle every other hour after that. Uh, and so I was quite sure that we were gonna get to 100 very soon. But by the time it was time for me to go to bed, we had about 90 or 92 uh, spots filled of the 100. So I decided to go to bed and, and wake up and um, you know wait till the last few came in. And then when I woke up, uh, I saw that there were 120 students who came in. So we, forget, we, we weren't able to close the cart overnight. And what had happened was there was a number of people overseas who woke up and saw the offer and, and then said yes to it. So by the time I woke up in the morning, uh, my team and I, we, we closed the cart and we switched it to an email a subscription form where people could sign up for the wait list, which I know many of you are on right now. And again, if you wanna get on that so you can hear about the launch next week, uh, you can go to smartfromscratch.com or if you're listening to this in the future, if the course is closed again, uh, it'll reopen for you uh, even better. So that again is at smartfromscratch.com. So I was very happy with the results. 100, 120 students uh, came in. I uh, set up a Facebook group privately for them so we could communicate more closely together. I also decided to set up office hours uh, every once in a while. So we started out at about one per week. And this was really important for me. And in the new course that's coming out, uh, the new version of Smart From Scratch, the public one, I will still continue to hold office hours and you'll see more information about that when you sign up. But I decided to go weekly at first with the brand new students and we called them the founding students. And the reason we did that, instead of calling them beta students or, uh, you know, something like that, you know, founding students gives a little bit of ownership to this group. And a lot of them uh, told me that they did sign up because they wanted to get in early and, and feel special and actually influence what this course became. So with them, I was able to build the content of the course and do it in a way where I knew it was going to be impactful after the first set of videos came out. For example, I collected a survey from them asking what they liked about the videos, what they didn't like, which ones were helpful, which ones were not, so we could refilm them and get them ready for the upcoming launch next week, which is really cool. So that was extremely helpful. 
So the survey, the, the, that is the survey questions and answers that I got. The office hours where uh, I, I, was, I would send out the links for the office hours via email and on the Facebook group to get people to, to know that it was coming up, uh, they were extremely helpful because I was able to interact with students one-on-one -on -one and hear from them what their issues were, what their problems were, what was holding them back, what they liked, what they loved. And I used a tool called Zoom, zoom.us, and that is an amazing tool for this type of thing, the office hours thing, because it's very easy to schedule a meeting and it records them for you and you can easily send a link afterwards to play the replay back to people who didn't attend. Uh, and it's just super simple uh, to use. So again, that's zoom.us. Another important aspect of the one-to-one -one interactions and also the survey results was understanding what was holding people back. Uh, so there were certain moments where different parts of the course seemed to be a little bit more difficult than others. So I worked in uh, how to make those easier the next time around when, when, when doing the full launch. Uh, I created more videos to help the current students and, and things like that. Um, but I also got a feel for what was happening in people's lives that actually made them put the coursework on hold. I actually didn't uh, get very strict with when certain homework assignments were due or certain videos were sp supposed to be watched because I wanted to get a close feel for just in general, how were they going to go through the course on their own pace? Were they going to just rush right through it, which a few people did, uh, or were they going to actually pace themselves nicely, which many people did and uh, were on par with what I thought was going to happen. And then there were others who completely kind of just shut down and didn't even start or started the first video and then, you know, life gets in the way, right? And so I had a lot of conversations with people during the office hours and also privately to determine, you know, what kinds of things could be done to better hold them accountable. And, and a lot of great things happened through those conversations. Like I now know that I should have included some sort of autoresponder sequence on top of the course just to kind of get people to uh, re like sort of reminders uh, as to where they should be at certain times or FAQs related to certain sections that, that came out via email or within the course itself to kind of help people over some of those small humps. And a lot of times when people are going through this course, I realize, and this is what I found, what, even when I go through courses, is that sometimes it's just a small little hiccup or something that doesn't align correctly with what is happening in the videos or just some question that I have can, that, that can sometimes hold me back from moving forward and progressing. Because at least in my experience, I often have those questions when I come across a, a difficult part in the process. and when I come across a difficult part in the process, I'll kind of move away from that thing because it's scary or different or uncomfortable and I'll go do something that I'm more comfortable with or something that gives me some you know, better feelings. And, and sometimes it's, it's going to Facebook or uh, watching videos on YouTube or just stepping away from the computer and doing something completely different or sometimes it's busy work, but essentially what it is, it's, it's procrastination. And it's because this resistance, this I don't know what's, what I'm supposed to do right now, that kind of feeling that instead of getting the answer, and if we can't find it right away, we just move on to something else uh, because it, we just hate feeling stuck, right? And so my job as a course creator and your job if you create your own courses is to determine where these moments are in the journey that your students have through your course so that you can address those concerns and understand what those questions are that need to be answered to get them over those sometimes very small humps so that they can keep progressing. And th th that was one of the other big things that I learned while uh, testing and launching uh, my first course here, which was really cool. So I'm just super thrilled of the progress that a number of students have made. And uh, again, a number of other students have just taken their time or, or haven't even really gotten started yet. With the beauty is about the, uh, this course in particular, is that much like the process of Will It Fly, which it very much mimics, but again, in a more uh, uh, sort of hand-holding kind of way, a lot more examples, I actually walk you through the process of how I validate a particular idea that I have with you, which is really cool. And so I'm kind of leading by example there. What's really cool is that it's done in a very iterative process. So there's, there's different stages. It's actually broken down into three stages. And at the end of each stage, you sort of check in with yourself in the process to make sure you're still good to move forward. And if, if there are any doubts, we talk about those. We try to dig deep and determine why those doubts are there. And 
you can always start over and go back to the beginning. And after you go through the process once, the idea of market research and validation becomes a lot easier. And, and there were actually quite a bit of students who started with one idea, went through the stage uh, one and even stage two, and then realized that that wasn't for them. Sometimes it was because of the market research that they did and the, and the competitors that were out there and, and just determining and not really feeling like they could actually compete with them, which isn't always the case. Sometimes it's a lot deeper than that. But in some of the cases, it did make sense. But then starting over with a completely different idea and actually crushing it and doing really well with it and moving forward with it. Um, a number of people had uh, had come up with their first customers through this process, even before creating a website. And that's the other cool thing about this particular course. I wanted to make sure, because one of my biggest pet peeves with courses is that when I take a course and I pay for it, I am forced to pay for something else to be able to do the process. And that's not something I wanted to do. I mean, sometimes that has to happen with some of the things you do, like if you're gonna teach email marketing, for example, I mean, you will need an email service provider of, of some kind, of course. But in this particular course, for the beginners who are just starting out, I, I didn't want them to have money or the uh, technology get in the way of actually making progress. I wanted to use the strategies here to motivate people to get to a point where later it just made sense to do that, but not have them question the idea of whether or not they need to purchase something beyond the price of the course. So there are there, there, there's no need to set up a, a blog or website or landing pages or social media accounts or pay for anything. It's all about the process. It's all about the practice of having conversations about your idea and validating it and stepping out of your comfort zone, which are all traits that all successful entrepreneurs have to have. And this is the beginning, so it's gonna be tough. And it's funny because when I told a lot of my colleagues and friends that I was coming up with this course and that I was gonna target absolute beginners, a lot of them kind of rolled their eyes or said, Pat, are you sure you wanna do this? And I said, well, why are you saying that? And they said, well, because beginners are the hardest people to teach because there are so many limiting beliefs that they have. They're just starting out from the beginning and they have no idea what's gonna happen. And I said, challenge accepted. And that's where Smart From Scratch comes into play. So guys, I'm so thrilled to announce that uh, next week we're going to be launching Smart From Scratch and you can check it out and sign up for the waitlist if uh, the waitlist is up at smartfromscratch.com or it could be available at the time that you check it out. Uh, but again, it's not for everybody. If you have a business and, and, you're, and you're satisfied with it and you know it's the business that you want to continue with, even if you are sort of stuck with it, but you know that you like the idea this course is not for you. Those courses that are that are for you are gonna come later. But, but I really wanted to start uh, with this challenging foundational uh, course for people who are just starting out because it is really gonna set up success for all these other things in the future. And it's my hope, and I, and I hope you feel this way too, that when you create something, you want people to be blown away by it so they'll stick around and uh, can't help but ask for other things that you have to offer free or paid. And, and that's that was my goal here too. So for those of you who are just starting out or maybe you started out and you just, it didn't go well or it didn't go as planned or you know that you rushed into things, well, Smart From Scratch is gonna kind of put the brakes on it a little bit so you can actually validate and go through some of those early processes that uh, most people skip over or don't wanna teach or just don't realize how important they are. So. Thank you so much for listening in. I appreciate it. And whether you end up getting the course or not, I hope this information was helpful, inspiring to you. And it just shows you that, you know, we all make mistakes. And as long as you can learn from those mistakes, as you, as long as you can collect feedback along the way and, and be open to uh, the, the different processes and, and, and also know that just because somebody else did something, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way you should do it too. But sometimes you won't know until you do it and try it and actually ask yourself these questions, which is, is this for me? And for me with breakthrough blogging back in the day, uh, that wasn't the right answer. And I'm so thrilled that I went through that process. Um, and I'm happy that I was able to kind of offer everybody a refund to sort of start clean again. Big thank you to the founding students. You guys are awesome. You guys obviously have lifetime access to the course. And for anybody who ends up checking it out, uh, thank you for doing so. And I just want to wish you all the luck in the world. And I look forward to seeing you in there and in the Facebook group and uh, helping you along the way. So thank you. All right, guys, you might remember a few weeks back, uh, Noah did this really cool experiment where he actually gave the first thousand of you a dollar each to listen to his show. And um, right now he's back on because he wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser of what the show would be like by asking me questions, actually. So here we are in a sponsorship spot and he's asking me, me questions. He's always doing innovative things. So Noah, welcome back. Uh, congrats on the new show and all, the, all of its success so far. Uh, why, why don't you take, take the mic for a little bit and, and we'll, we'll run.
Uh, I love you, Pat. You're the man. All right, we're going to uh, go through this quickly because I know you've got only a little bit of time. Uh, what is the worst job you've ever had? Oh, gosh. Worst job I've ever had was at a factory that was given to me through a temp job agency, and I was literally stuffing bags with Halloween costumes, and I was just doing one job, <laughs> like folding the left sleeve over and then passing it over, folding the left sleeve over, passing it over, and I did that for eight hours a day for three months. Okay. Wow, I have some more questions, but we'll keep going. <laughs> if Brewster's million challenge, if you had a million dollars to spend in one day, how would you spend it? If I had a million bucks and uh, I would just give it away. How uh, would you give it to or how would you give it away? I would give it away to uh, uh, people who have had an effect on my life, like the marching band at Cal, the high school that I went to, uh, Pencils of Promise. I, I'd reach out to people who have made an impact on my life, including some of my audience members who I knew uh, were very important to leaving me feedback early in the days and just hooking them up with something. Um, man, this is a hard question. <laughs> you didn't even give me time to think about it, but uh, I, would, I, w I wouldn't spend it on myself because I'm just truly happy with where I'm at now and I would really want to see how I might be creative and giving it away for others or helping at least other people take action. I think that's another thing. Maybe I can go and give a dollar away to a million people to get them to listen to my show, just like you. I don't really? know. I like it. I like it. Uh, if you can have a one-on-one, -on -one, I know you love basketball. If you could have a one-on-one -on -one game with anyone, who would it be? Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vay I thought you were going to say like Jordan or something. No, Gary oh. Vaynerchuk. We've been talking about this for a while, and it's I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I know he balls. He I've challenged him before. He said yes, but we haven't set a date or anything. But maybe some of you can uh, tag him and say, hey, guys, let's let's get on it. Maybe maybe have it be like a charity thing. I don't know. Ooh, I love that idea. Actually, basketball charity event for nerds. Um, I'm putting it down on my notes. I hear you writing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what would be a best day ever for you? Best day like ever is with my family on a lake fishing. Uh, somewhere where I've never fished before. Just peaceful on a lake with my entire family, my dad, my mom included. Uh, that would be a perfect day. Awesome. What are you guys eating or drinking out there? Uh, we're eating uh, sandwiches and drinking, uh, I don't know, beers. Okay. And then speaking of sandwiches, <laughs> it's funny you say sandwiches. If, uh, <laughs> if there was a sand sandwich named the Pat Flynn, what would be on it? Uh, it would be, geez, um, the Pat Flynn sandwich. It would uh, have sauerkraut and roast beef and buffalo, no, 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 chicken, sauerkraut, and uh, buffalo hot sauce, and probably some ranch dressing too. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Uh, dude, you ever been to Ike's, by the way, in the Bay? No. All right, check it out next time you go there. Okay. Uh, and then I would last, love a sandwich named after me, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> Ike's is named after a lot of like SF like, uh, players, sports players. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last thing, what are you really, really excited about right now? Uh, right now, I'm really excited about a physical product that I'm working on, actually a whole brand new business that I haven't really revealed yet, but it'll become the next experiment that I'll be sharing on SPI very soon. And like I said, a physical product, it'll be launched via Kickstarter, at least it's planned to launch on Kickstarter uh, this coming September. So um, I'm really excited about that. Pat, that is all I got for you. If you want more questions with me and Pat and other people, uh, Noah Kagan, The Inflection Point. Check it out, guys. All right, I also wanna thank today's sponsor, which is GoDaddy. Uh, they're amazing. They're sponsoring the Smart Passive Income podcast here in the quarter of 2017. I'm super stoked because I've been using them for such a long time and they've really helped me with my mission for not just getting domain names, of course, and every once in a while I'll just pop on to GoDaddy when I have a great idea or, or a new venture that I want to work on and I'll just get the domain and kind of reserve it, which I think is a really smart thing to do because uh, you know there's less and less available to us each and every day. But I also use them to buy domain names to forward to different parts of my website. So for a very cheap price, I can have people go to my number one tutorial, which is podcastingtutorial.com, which lives on SmartPassive income.com but the 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 domain podcasting tutorial.com is just so much easier to remember to use to type in and to get to i also have that for ebooks the smart way and uh will it fly book.com and so many others so right now you can get a special discount on a godaddy domain just use the code smart 30 at checkout to get 30 percent off new purchases with a few exceptions so again that's godaddy.com code smart 30 for 30 percent off check it out Alrighty, thank you again so much for listening all the way through. I appreciate you. Again, smartfromscratch.com for those of you who are just starting out and need some help, that's there for you. And I look forward to uh, serving you in the next episode. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Smart Passive Income Podcast at www.smartpassiveincome.com.
Hey, have you ever wondered what makes the difference between a one and a five-star review? Well, turn into Behind the Review, a phenomenal podcast from the Entrepreneur Podcast Network. Each week, Yelp's small business expert, Emily Washkovic, features a different conversation with a different reviewer or business owner to find out what was really going on, as the title suggests, behind the review. Recently, for example, Emily featured an episode about Aldea Country Eatery, the number five spot in the world on Yelp's top 100 places to eat. Emily interviews a wide variety of customers and business owners from a wide variety of industries, tabletop gaming companies, the fitness industry, you name it. This is a really fascinating peek into what makes a great customer experience for any business and you won't want to miss out. So listen to Behind the Review right now on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher.